When the U.S. Army says it wants to put a brand new tilt rotor into soldiers' hands by the end of 2026, the first reaction is almost automatic. Are we watching history try to repeat itself? Because in the tilt rotor world, there is one shadow you cannot escape, the V-22 Osprey. It is famous for its operational reach and speed, but it is also infamous for pauses in operations, hard questions from investigators, and a reputation that, fairly or not, has stuck to the entire concept. So when Defense News quotes Army Chief of Staff Randy George, describing a dramatically accelerated timeline for the MV-75, better known as Bell's V-280 Valor. The real story is not just about procurement speed. The real story is about risk, credibility, and whether the Army can get the benefits of a tilt rotor without inheriting the Osprey's public and operational problems. Start with the headline number, the schedule shift. Not long ago, the expectation was that the new aircraft would begin arriving around 2031-2032. Now we are talking about the end of 2026. That is not a small improvement, that is a different program philosophy. And it forces a blunt question. What exactly is being delivered in 2026? Defense Express hints at the most likely answer. What arrives may be a prototype or early pre-serial aircraft rather than fully mature mass-produced machines. If so, the acceleration is less about fielding a finished system and more about putting hardware in uniforms early, using real users to surface weaknesses faster than a lab can. That sounds sensible, but it also moves the program into a high-wire act where operational feedback becomes part of development and development becomes something you do while the public is already watching. This is where the Osprey comparison becomes unavoidable. The V-22 is operated by the U.S. Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps, as well as Japan's self-defense forces, and its history includes repeated interruptions in operations after accidents and the discovery of technical issues. The details of each incident vary, but the strategic effect is consistent. Every high-profile pause reinforces the idea that tilt rotors are inherently problem aircraft, and reputations in aviation are brutal. They do not care whether a problem is a design flaw, a maintenance culture issue, a training pipeline issue, or a supply chain issue, they flatten everything into one conclusion. This machine is risky. So if the Army accelerates MV-75 too aggressively, any early mishap, especially during the messy period when prototypes and evolving configurations are in the field, could harden that stigma before the aircraft ever reaches full maturity. In other words, even if the engineering path is sound, the perception risk is real, and perception shapes budgets, oversight, and political patience. But the counter-argument is just as sharp, and it might be the entire point of this acceleration. What if early delivery is not reckless, but preventive? What if the fastest way to avoid an Osprey-style saga is to expose the MV-75 to real operational routines early, so that the unknown unknowns surface while the design is still flexible and the production line is not yet locked? Defense Express explicitly raises this possibility. An accelerated prototype in the hands of the military could reveal shortcomings and allow fixes before serial production truly ramps. That is the logic of iterative development, build, test, learn, modify, rather than pretending you can perfectly simulate combat aviation realities from a distance. And in aviation, the harsh truth is that time does not automatically buy safety. Disciplined feedback loops do. A long timeline can still produce surprises if the wrong things are tested or if operator feedback arrives too late to change the architecture. That brings us to what MV-75 actually represents. It is the official designation now attached to the V-280 Valor, which won against the Sikorsky Defiant X in the future vertical lift competition, and it is meant to replace the UH-60 Black Hawk as the Army's future main transport platform. That matters because replacing Black Hawk is not a niche upgrade, it is a foundational bet. This is the aircraft that will define how quickly troops and supplies can move, how far they can reach without refueling, and how the Army designs operations around speed and range. If you are the Army, you do not accelerate that lightly, unless you believe the strategic payoff is worth the discomfort. And that is the first strategic clue. This decision suggests urgency, not just enthusiasm. The Army appears to be signaling that it wants capability earlier, even if that means accepting a risk posture that, in calmer eras, might have been politically unacceptable. So, is MV-75 doomed to repeat the Osprey? The honest answer is that it depends less on the tilt rotor concept itself and more on how the Army manages three interlocking risks, technical risk, operational integration risk, and narrative risk. Technical risk is the obvious one. Rushing development can compress testing, reduce the time between discovering a problem and having to ship a solution, and push teams into fix-forward mode. Operational integration risk is subtler. You can have a technically sound aircraft that still becomes accident-prone if training, maintenance, spare parts availability, and operational procedures lag behind. 
tilt rotors are not helicopters with a new paint job. They demand different habits, different troubleshooting, and different expectations. And narrative risk is the invisible multiplier. If the program communicates poorly, if it looks like it is cutting corners rather than building smarter, then every minor issue becomes an indictment, not a data point. This is why the distinction between prototype delivery and serial fielding matters so much. If 2026 deliveries are clearly framed as early iterative aircraft intended for intensive evaluation, the public and oversight environment may treat issues as part of the learning curve. But if the Army allows the message to become, we are fielding the replacement for Black Hawk in 2026, then expectations snap into a different category. People assume maturity, reliability, and stability. And once those expectations exist, the tolerance for early failures collapses. In defense acquisition, managing expectations is not marketing fluff. It is risk management. The program must be explicit about what delivery means, how feedback will be incorporated, and what gates exist before mass production truly begins. There is also a deeper strategic tension here. Tilt rotors promise something armies obsess over. Time. Time to reinforce a threatened point. Time to bypass terrain. Time to stretch operational reach without relying on forward bases. Time in military planning is a weapon, but the Osprey's history is a reminder that time gained in flight can be time lost on the ground if fleets are grounded, inspections multiply, or confidence erodes. So the MV-75 program is effectively a test of whether the Army can capture the operational advantages of speed and range while engineering a support ecosystem that prevents availability crises. That ecosystem, training, maintenance doctrine, supply chains, and safety culture is not a footnote. It is the aircraft's second airframe. In the end, the most important question is not, will MV-75 have problems? Every aircraft does, especially early in its life. The real question is, will the program treat problems as signals to improve or as embarrassments to hide? Acceleration can be dangerous if it becomes denial, if the schedule becomes sacred and reality becomes negotiable. But acceleration can also be intelligent if it is paired with transparency, aggressive testing, and a clear boundary between experimentation and mass fielding. If the Army is truly accelerating because it wants earlier operational learning, then 2026 could be a smart move. Find flaws early, fix them before the production line hardens, and prevent a long, slow build-up to a dramatic failure. If, however, the acceleration is driven by optics, by the desire to announce a fast fielding win without the messy honesty of iterative development, then yes, MV-75 risks inheriting the Osprey's most damaging legacy. Not the engineering challenges, but the perception that tilt rotors are rushed, fragile, and politically toxic. So, will MV-75 repeat the Osprey's fate? It is not predetermined. The technology is only one part of the story. The program's discipline, the Army's willingness to let testing drive decisions, and the clarity of what delivery in 2026 actually means, those will decide whether MV-75 becomes the Army's next workhorse or the next cautionary tale. And if you had to bet on one single factor that will determine success, it is this. When the first real problems show up, as they always do, will the Army slow down long enough to learn even if the calendar says it cannot?